I'll just give you a cue here in a little. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, anytime you're ready. Great. Good morning, everyone. Thanks uh, for coming out today. Uh, my name is John Akpata. I'm the peace officer for the Marijuana Party. Uh, I've been a member of the party since 2004, and I've run in the last uh, five federal elections. I have a few points that I want to go over today just to kind of get everybody on the same page for some of the perspectives of uh, the public that they've brought to me and uh, some ideas that members of the party have as well. Uh, today is six months after legalization in Canada, and we're just about, just under six months away from the next federal election. Uh, last time I checked, there's about 115 licensed producers in Canada operating under the Health Canada regulations. In the past three months, $307 million was spent on legal cannabis sales, and $1.17 billion in illegal sales in the past three months. Uh, my experience as a member of the party, um, we talk about the plant, we talk about people that use it, we talk about the medicinal value, we talk about the law, and now the cannabis has le been legalized, we're talking about stigma. So uh, this weekend uh, will be April 20th on a Saturday. For decades and decades, people across the country have gathered peacefully in public to use cannabis to protest uh, marijuana and drug prohibition. And now that legalization has occurred, I'm sure that this 420 on a Saturday is probably going to be a very, very big celebration, so long as the weather is nice. Uh, I suspect that about two-thirds of the people that are there are there to celebrate their new freedoms and liberties, and one-third of the people that are there are still there to protest the injustices of the uh, current regime. Um, this being said, um, some political officials and some police officials have said that they are going to cancel certain events, they are going to widely ticket and uh, severely penalize the public for cannabis use. To all the chiefs of police, to all the police officers that are out there, I ask you to consider the following. Do not issue any fines, fees, penalties, or tickets on 420 whatsoever. Uh, members of the public want to celebrate their freedom. It's been going on for decades. And police officers can now use cannabis themselves. And uh, we know the police have a very dangerous, stressful, difficult job. Many of them suffer from physical uh, situations, from carrying all their equipment or uh, physical altercations. And of course, PTSD is a reality for police officers. So if you're a police officer at a 420 event, uh, Ask people how they're doing. Ask them what their cannabis choices are and why they're doing it. And maybe you can get some recommendations from the public uh, how you, you can use cannabis and, and benefit yourselves as well. Um, the over-policing of cannabis is something that will definitely clog up the court system, waste a lot of money, and waste a lot of time. So again, I'm asking all the police officers to... Uh, use your best judgment and give the public every possible courtesy and consideration to let them go without fines, fees, penalties, or tickets. Um, the next big issue in the, uh, well, from members of the party and members of the public is the expungement of criminal records. Currently, there are around 500,000 Canadian citizens that have a criminal record for a marijuana-related offense. Uh, the current liberal regime has said that they are going to suspend 10,000 of these criminal records for simple possession. Well, 10,000 out of 500,000 is 2%. And uh, that's not anywhere near 100%, which is what it should be. I personally believe that uh, record suspension does not go far enough. It might set aside a criminal record, but it does not completely expunge or destroy, bleach, shred, uh, completely eviscerate the record. So criminal records, even though they're suspended, they can be disclosed, and this will definitely lead to discrimination uh, against these people in terms of seeking employment, seeking housing, uh, even getting a student loan. Um, if you have a criminal record, it can be an extremely difficult process for you to go through. 
Um, some political officials have said that uh, expungement is not the right thing to do. Maybe suspend the records. That's all that needs to be done. Uh, you only want to expunge criminal records if, if it's an egregious offense or if it's a, a constitutional violation. I would say that all of marijuana prohibition has been a human rights violation. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Cannabis is a seed-bearing plant that provides food, medicine, clothing, and shelter for human beings. To deny people access to this plant is to deny them access to their own dignity. And the reason why we have a medicinal marijuana system in Canada is not because the federal government decided that they were going to do the right thing. It's because over the past 20 years, there's been 12 or 14 very significant court cases and court challenges to the laws, and many of those challenges ended up in the marijuana laws being deemed as unconstitutional. So we were right the whole time. We were not misinformed. We were telling the truth the whole time. And the government of the day has an ethical and moral obligation to expunge those criminal records, permanently delete them, and make sure that they do not exist at all. We can look at other jurisdictions like uh, San Francisco, San Francisco created a, a computer algorithm to find people with criminal records and expunge them. 9,000 people had their criminal records expunged. We look at uh, uh, jurisdictions like Oregon, Seattle, Chicago, Baltimore. They're all saying that they're going to expunge criminal records. I believe that uh, Seattle has, or maybe it was Oregon, journalists, please fact check me on this, but they have uh, expunged criminal records for the past 30 years. So there's no such thing as a cannabis criminal uh, in that in that area, uh, California, when their uh, ballot initiative passed in uh, 2016, they resentenced people, they let people out of jail, and uh, they expunged their criminal records. Part of the goal of the marijuana party was to remove the stigma that is associated with cannabis use with the plant and people that use it. Uh, keep your, uh, your ears open for that word stigma. It's going to come up again, and I'll sum it up at the end. Uh, another priority that uh, the public is concerned about and has been brought to my attention over many, many years is that uh, the medical applications of cannabis and uh, medical research needs to be the number one priority of the emerging sector. Currently, there are uh, 34 research class licenses for microgrows. And uh, for years, cannabis activists have said, cannabis cures epilepsy. Well, maybe cure is not the right word, but it stops epileptic seizures. It stops the symptoms associated with multiple sclerosis. It's definitely beneficial to people that have cancer. And you don't even need to be that far out as a medical person. Everyday aches and pains, stress, a good night's sleep. Many, many people have been using cannabis for decades for these purposes. And now that lots of legal jurisdictions and medicinal jurisdictions are popping up all over the globe, it's not just anecdotal evidence anymore. You can go to the National Cancer Institute in the United States of America. They've got a bunch of information on how cannabis reverses the effects of cancer in the body. You can go to the Harvard Medical uh, Review, and uh, they just recently released a study on how cannabis is uh, extremely effective in curing cancer. Uh, if you go to the University of Tel Aviv, you will find a PhD geneticist that discovered the LD-1 human genome, and that human genome can be turned on and turned off with breast cancer. April is uh, Cancer Awareness Month, so we would hope that many people would do some reading and do some research on uh, cancer in April. It's my understanding that three out of four Canadians will get cancer in their lifetime, and two out of three people that get cancer will pass away from cancer. So that in and of itself is, I believe, an excellent reason to have medicinal research as a priority in the cannabis sector. Um, even in my own personal life, you know, one of my, uh, one of my idols and heroes is Bob Marley. Uh, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about Bob Marley's death, but I'm pretty certain that Bob Marley passed away from cancer. Uh, a couple of years ago, Gord Downey from the Tragically Hip he passed away from cancer. Adam Yauk, MCA from the Beastie Boys, he passed away from cancer. We have Jack Layton passed away from cancer. And not too long ago, Paul Dewar passed away from cancer. So all Canadian citizens, hopefully, are, will be very vested and very interested in pushing the cannabis as medicine issue 
forward. Uh, cannabis must be accepted as medicine by medical professionals. Again, this word stigma comes up. There's a lot of medical professionals that will not prescribe cannabis as medication. They cannot prescribe cannabis as medication. They're afraid that they're going to lose their licenses. They're afraid that they're going to be sanctioned by the College of uh, Physicians and uh, won't be able to practice medicine at all. <clears throat> Scientific studies have been done all around the world for the past 40 years or so. And I would hope that medical professionals look into those studies so that we can remove the stigma of cannabis as medicine from our uh, current regime. Uh, another area that many activists are concerned about are the industrial applications of Canada. Uh, I've traveled to a few places in British Columbia where I've seen um, pulp and uh, wood processing factories that are laying idle. Uh, we have the potential to grow industrial grade hemp at the doorsteps of those factories. We don't need to go hundreds and hundreds of kilometers into the forest to cut down soft wood. We could grow hemp and use it for, uh, to replace plastic. Uh, we have a plastic epidemic in this, uh, this era. Uh, by 2050, there's going to be more plastic in the oceans than fish. That's based on weight. So if Canada would take all of the unemployed canola workers, all those canola farmers, all the 130,000 oil workers that are having their jobs threatened, all the auto workers that uh, lose their jobs on a regular basis. I always say, we could re retrofit those factories, we could grow cannabis, and everyone goes, ha, 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 John, that's, that's hilarious. But the reality of the situation is, if we prioritize industrial-grade hemp, we can use hemp for oil, we can have biodegradable plastic produced in this country, we could use hemp for fuel, it's not going to completely uh, replace the uh, petrochemical industry, but it can help augment and uh, create profitable uh, uh, corporations for Canada. We can use hemp as fiber, whether it's for clothing or textile pro uh, properties. And of course, you can use hemp uh, for industrial textiles like hempcrete, and you can use hemp fiber to make shelters for human beings. Uh, hemp fiber is more fire retardant than softwood, doesn't cause cancer like asbestos, and it's lighter, so it's more profitable to grow it, produce it, and ship it. Um, I guess the last thing I'm going to talk about uh, very briefly is the stigma associated with uh, cannabis. Um, it was Emily Murphy that wrote the, uh, the marijuana prohibition in, uh, in the 20s. Emily Murphy also wrote the Chinese Exclusion Act. She also wrote the Sexual Sterilization Act and was instrumental in helping to develop legislation that became the Indian Act. It is unfortunate that for almost a century in Canada, uh, indigenous people and uh, African people, people of Caribbean descent, black people, have received an unfair brunt of the policing and criminalization of cannabis. That's beyond dispute, and it doesn't need to be debated. What needs to happen is we need to recognize that it never should have been criminalized in the first place. It shouldn't be criminalized now. It is a violation of people's rights to not give them access to cannabis. And for all of these reasons, I believe that the government of Canada should issue an apology for all of the people that had their homes ruined, people that had their children taken away, people that were put in prison, people that are saddled with criminal records to this day. All of it needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be done for ethical reasons and moral reasons. Canada is an ethical and moral standard to the rest of the world. Canada legalized cannabis October 18th. In Malaysia, there were two individuals that were to be sentenced to death in October of 2018. And it was just a couple of days after legalization in Canada that people in Malaysia said, this is crazy, we can't execute people for cannabis oil. Canada's a first world country, they just legalized it. Our laws need to change. And this is happening all over the world. Uh, without a doubt, Canada's gonna be an industrial and commercial leader in cannabis, but they have not addressed removing the stigma that exists associated with cannabis. And uh, I have a couple ideas of how we can address that in a fun and profitable way. Uh, 
It would be nice to see uh, the Royal Canadian Mint produce some commemorative and collectible coins that have cannabis leaves depicted on them. I'm sure they would be collector's items and would be accepted all over the world. I would also like to see Canada Post develop a collectible issue of cannabis stamps. Same thing, I think it would be uh, collected all over the world and celebrated. And it's not outside the realm of possibility that uh, the federal government or provincial governments or both could have cannabis museums so we could actually see the history of cannabis in this country. We could learn about how the legislation was passed. We could see uh, the benefits, how it helps people and how we can say we are world leaders in helping to remove the stigma that's associated with cannabis. Um, there's a lot of people that are upset about the inconsistencies in the cannabis regulations. I'm not going to get into that. I'm looking for uh, silver linings that I've heard in the news. One uh, licensed producer was growing so much cannabis, they didn't have enough workers to cultivate and grow the cannabis. So they turned to the migrant worker program. If you are employed under the migrant worker program, it's my understanding that you will be paid less than minimum wage for the province of Ontario. This licensed producer said, no, we're going to pay them the same wages as everybody else because ethical capitalism is something that's going to help develop this industry. Uh, for people that are receiving cannabis as medicine, cannabis is the only prescription medication in Canada that is taxed. One licensed producer said, we're going to pay the tax for our patients because it's unethical and immoral for them to pay the tax. Again, ethical and moral responsibility in the cannabis sector is what's going to help move it forward. And that's why uh, expungement of all those criminal records is so important. It's the ethical and moral thing to do. And I would challenge any finance minister to explain to me why 500,000 people shouldn't be allowed to participate in the economy, get jobs, even get loans, and pay their taxes on it. Uh, the last thing that I want to say is uh, to everyone this Saturday, enjoy 420, have a good time, share your knowledge, uh, drink plenty of water, <laughs> go easy on the edibles, give yourselves about 90 minutes before your edibles kick in. You will thank me for that. And uh, if you're going to participate in 420, don't drive. Just don't even bother going anywhere near a car. Take public transportation, take a bus, ride your bike, your skateboard, walk, carpool with a, a sober driver. Uh, I live in Ottawa, one of two or three jurisdictions where the police are not going to use the, uh, the uh, Dragar drug test 5000, which is the uh, THC breathalyzer machine. So maybe people in Ottawa don't have to worry about that. Same with people in Delta, British Columbia. But for everybody else in the country, the police are going to pull you over, stop you, they can seize your vehicle if you test positive for THC. And then there's all sorts of huge fines and penalties that nobody wants to see enforced. So I hope everyone has a great weekend. Enjoy your 420. And uh, we were right the whole time. Congratulations to everyone that used cannabis and cultivated it. You made the world a better place. Thank you. Okay, open up the question. Just a quick question. Can you elaborate on the uh, you said police ticketing? Planning and the canceling of events on the 420? Yeah, I think in, uh, it was said in uh, Nova Scotia, I think it's in Halifax, uh, the, one of the police officials said that they're not going to let people use cannabis publicly and they will be uh, ticketing people. I know that in uh, Vancouver, uh, Cypress Hill is supposed to be performing at a public 420 event and some of the municipal officials are trying to shut it down or cancel that event. And then again, police have said that they're going to ticket everyone and give everyone fines, fees, and penalties. And when you travel across the country, um, it's different in every jurisdiction. It's different in every municipality. So that's why I'm asking all police officers to just use the amount of courtesy and discretion that they have to not issue any tickets. So if this is a, you talk about over-policing. So is that yes. what you mean by, can you get, get, just talk a little bit more about what you mean by the over-policing of what is now a legal substance? Well, you know, the marijuana party, we're unified by the idea that cannabis should not be criminalized. But under legalization, it is criminalized again. And there's even more penalties uh, for trafficking, possession, all the driving situations. And uh, we know through certain uh, race data collection studies that were done in Ottawa, Kingston, Toronto, Halifax, 
London, Ontario, Windsor, Ontario, that, you know, black people, indigenous people, people that are perceived to be Middle Eastern or Muslim are pulled over three, five, seven, nine times their rate when represented in the population. And everyone uses cannabis at the same rate. There's about 9 million people in Canada that use cannabis. Some people get targeted. Some people get uh, very strictly penalized. There was a study that was done in Toronto that demonstrated that when black people get charged with a cannabis-related offense, a marijuana offense, their bail conditions are set higher. So it's more difficult for them to meet bail. And uh, I met Vern White in uh, 2014 when he he had just become a senator, and he said that cannabis is definitely over-policed. Under prohibition, police officers and police uh, services used their dogs and their helicopters and their detectives and their infrared scopes and, you know, very intelligent, intrepid people to go looking for fields of cannabis, but they wouldn't go looking for people that are reported as missing. You know, we have an opioid crisis. We have fentanyl all over the place. Guns are increasing in the street. As the internet evolves, there's human trafficking done online and child pornography. Talk to any police officer. They've got way more important things to do. And the fines, fees, penalties, and criminalization of cannabis didn't stop anyone from using it. It was a complete failure. So that's what I mean when I say the over-policing of cannabis. So how do you get this onto a federal agenda? You have an election, like you mentioned, a couple yeah. of months. How do you get this actually into an election where this likely isn't, this isn't an issue that anybody, at least any of the parties, are talking about? Because they, they talked about it four years ago, and now they seem to have moved on to other things. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, um, it was Jagmeet Singh and Murray Rankin of the NDP that... Uh, I believe it was C-145, they brought up a private member's bill to have criminal records expunged. I think that that bill uh, failed. I I don't think it even got a second reading. I could be incorrect, but I didn't hear anything about it after the first time. Um, There's a person, Anna Maria Ananajor, who has started a petition to have criminal records expunged. Uh, And there was one uh, liberal member of parliament from Toronto that said that criminal records could be expunged. Sorry, I don't have your name in my notes, but uh, I know that it was done on Twitter. And there's also uh, a petition, uh, a a pardon truck that was started in British Columbia that was touring around the West Coast trying to get people to sign petitions to have uh, criminal records expunged. So, I mean, it's a contentious issue as far as politicians are concerned. But it's not a contentious issue as far as the public is concerned. And I don't think that any members of parliament have gone far enough to really bring expunging criminal records as an issue that needs to be solved before the next election. It's my understanding that uh, the idea of record suspension, it's kind of like everyone in Canada that has a criminal record for a marijuana-related offense, it's like they're being held hostage and being used as bargaining chips in the next election, well, maybe we'll expunge your criminal records. Maybe we'll suspend them as an enticement for people to vote. But I would like to see that done before the next election so that the liberals that legalized it could say that they actually had ethical and moral considerations for their citizens when they did so. Are you worried that if none of this get, happens, I mean, all, all the stuff you talked about, if none of this happens before the election, yeah. that once we go through the campaign, government, new government or continuation of this government, whatever it is, that all of this gets lost, that it all gets forgotten because we've moved on in some ways to our issue. I think that's a genuine concern. That's partially why I'm here today. I've never done a press conference uh, before, and I think the timing is good. But I also want to make sure that the issues are brought up and uh, that the journalists and the reporters report on the issue and that uh, people talk about it because... Uh, it's it's as if the federal government is saying, okay, we legalized it, problem solved. It's not a perfect system. Every legal system can be modified and amended. Every act can be modified and amended. They can even be struck down. Um, I don't know if it's fake news or not, but uh, Andrew Scheer said that the conservatives are going to recriminalize marijuana and strike down the Cannabis Act. Uh, that doesn't really make any sense to me. So... I'm hoping that uh, the liberals that are in charge with the majority that legalized it will consider these points and it will benefit the public. Can I just lastly, since it seems, might as well use it all the time. 
<laughs> um, when you talk about stigma, yeah. uh, how is it that you can, how is it that a government can actually eliminate a, a, a stigma when it maybe is something more of a societal issue? Well, you can do things like, um, there were a few police services in Canada that got on Twitter and issued public statements and said, do not call 911 if you see people using cannabis. It's legal now. We've got more important things to do. Do not call 911 if you see someone growing cannabis plants in their backyard. It's legal now. We've got more important things to do. You know, Emily Murphy is on Parliament Hill. And when I wrote about Emily Murphy in 2005, people thought that I was making it up. People thought that I was lying about the history of Emily Murphy and how she was... Uh, a white supremacist and a racist person who created legislation to oppress people. The government needs to acknowledge that. And that's why I think a cannabis museum, to tell the actual truth and the actual history, 95 years of Canadian history, wouldn't be a bad thing. And like I said, uh, if I had a cannabis coin in my pocket issued by the government of Canada that said legalization October 2018, I, you know, I think that's a good way to end the stigma. And now that all the, these medical and legal jurisdictions are coming into existence, more and more people are going to use cannabis, especially medicinally, and they're going to prove that it's a medicine that works. For all the people that are using it recreationally, have fun, take it easy, and uh, try not to do anything uh, foolish. Any more questions? Okay, that'll bring it to a close. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good weekend.